I make no apology whatsoever for my stand on being a Baptist. If you take the Bible for what it says, you may not carry the name Baptist, but it will make a Baptist out of you. I'm not a Baptist because I was born into a Baptist home because I wasn't. The closest I could tell you is I was born into a Lutheran home if there was any religion in it at all. I was saved in a four-square gospel church. I didn't become a Baptist just because I started going to a Baptist church. I became a Baptist because I went to the scriptures and studied some things out. I had to give up speaking in tongues. The hardest one for me, I had to realize that when God does a job, it's permanent. And by the way, it is the issue that made a Baptist out of me. We were missionaries in France for 12 years. And I want to take you on a tour. If you've done any study of Baptist history, you've heard of a group of people called the Albigenses. They're named after a town in southern France. The town is Albi, and I've been there. They were the descendants of a group called the Qatar. I've been to some of the places I'm going to show you in the beginning of this tonight. I've climbed those mountains. I've, I've walked where they've walked. I've been to the town where the last of them were wiped out. These groups of people that are called the Cathars existed in southern Europe, Italy, the Waldenses, which we also study in Baptist history, were also called Cathars. They existed from the middle of the second century until 1209 in southern France when they wiped them out. That's a long time. We got a big goal ahead of us to keep the gospel pure for another thousand years like they did. If you go to normal histories, you will find things said about them that are just plain not true. They, they will call them dualists. They will call them deists. They will call them uh, Manicheans and things like this, that, that they were not. These were good, sound people of Baptist heritage. And we need to understand that. These people stood at great cost to themselves that we might have the gospel in its purity today. And like I say, we don't have an exclusive on the truth. We're not the only ones that are saved. We're not the only ones going up in the rapture. We're not any of those things. But there's a reason to be a Baptist. If you take and read modern church history, you're going to hear it said that the Puritans brought us religious freedom. They did not. They wanted a state church. They wanted to be able to legislate what you believe. Legislate where you can... Where, where, where you can worship. You had to get a license from them in order to preach. And what I want us to understand is the freedoms we have today are because of Baptists. The freedoms we're going to have tomorrow will because of, be because of Baptists. Because if we don't stand up and fight for our freedoms, we're going to lose them. Going to? I should say we are already losing them. And I'm not here to talk about politics. The reason that the gospel has gone out so much throughout the world is because Baptists stood. You know how Baptists won people to Christ during the Dark Ages? They couldn't go out and street preach. They'd be in jail. They couldn't uh, even hold meetings that the officials knew about because they'd go to jail and probably die for it. They did it by living holy lives and drawing people to them. Something that is missing so much in Baptist churches. And I just would like tonight to talk to us, talk to us a little bit about uh, what it cost for us to have what we have today. I just want to take you to some of the places, some of these I've visited and some of them I haven't. But I want you to see what it took to defend these, these people. This is the Chateau of Agliar. But this, see, it's up on a mountain. This one doesn't look too bad. But it is up on a mountaintop. Can you imagine taking an army up that hill to take that? These were built by the Cathars to protect themselves from the armies of the Pope that came down from France and up from Spain. These are along the Pyrenees Mountains. They had castles like this. A castle, by the way, is not a palace. A castle is a fortified building. And they had these on mountain peaks from the Mediterranean to the uh, Atlantic Ocean. You could see from one to the next so they could signal each other back and forth. They didn't live here. They only went up there when the when the armies of the Pope came after them. This is Montségur. Take an army up that. I mean, with our airplanes and things and our cannons today, it's not a problem, but take an army of foot, of foot soldiers up that mountain. Take the stone up there to build it. What it cost them to build that in, in labor. And 
This is Perpetus. This is the one I visited the most. Look at that wall you had to get up if you wanted to take that. This is uh, Puy de Laurent. Just looking from the top. How are you going to attack that with an army? They had to do this to survive. If they hadn't done this, they'd have been wiped out a lot earlier. The city we were missionaries in is the city of Carcassonne. It's the oldest and largest walled city in Europe that's still inhabited. It has about 800 people that still live in the city. It's a tourist trap. You go in there, it's just shop after shop after shop. This, that city was never taken militarily for one reason, I believe. It wasn't a Cathar city, but the count uh, there defended the Cathars. And God preserved that city, and it's still their day, beautiful city. Uh, this is Las Tours, and, and it's called that because that means the towers, and you can see the towers there and things. This next shot is a little further back that gives you a little better view of, of, the, of the, the terrain you had to go up to get there. Caribous. This, this one right here, when you were at that one, uh, Perpetus, that I mentioned earlier, I said that's the one we visited the most. When you're up there, you could see this one. Or when you're here, you'd look back and you'd see that one because you could see them from place to place. Uh, this is a little further view of exactly the same wow. castle. Uh, that's how they survived for a thousand years. They had to run up the mountains all the time. This picture, if you're looking at the, the, the feel of the pictures, this one's totally different. And that's the only reason it's here. I've never been to this one but it, because I like that picture so much. But now let's take a look at the same one from further back. Can you see it? It's there. These castles were built to defend the gospel, if you will. So they could have the freedom to worship. Qatar, uh, all right, the English word is Qatari, but we were missionaries in Qatar country, and I learned Qatar, so you're going to put up with my French pronunciation of it. But what's interesting is the meaning of the word. You see up there at the top, I've got the Greek, then I've got the English letters, and then the French name. Quite similar, isn't it? Qataros means clean or pure, either literally or figuratively. The Qatars were called the pure ones. It's translated in the Bible, one time it's translated clear. And you know what? It's interesting where it's translated clear, because the same verse has it translated pure. It's used twice in that verse, and it's the verse that talks about the streets of pure gold, clear as glass. So, so that gives you a little picture of what the word means. It's translated ten times clean. But most of the times it's translated pure. It's translated 17 times. And it's usually, not always, but usually talking about either a pure heart or a pure conscience. Qatar or Qatari means the pure ones. Qatars were called by this name because they lived pure lives and held to pure doctrine. Let's explain this name Qatar just a little bit. The name first appears in the second century, about 150 AD. At that time, there was an issue that came up amongst the churches. It was the doctrine of baptismal regeneration. With baptismal uh, regeneration, it drew unsaved pagans into the church, created impure churches. Churches that started doing things like the burning of incense and, the, and, and uh, the worshiping of idols and things like this started coming into the churches. Later become, became the Catholic Church. But it started back here. Those who maintained purity were called Cathars, or the pure ones. They maintained purity of doctrine and purity of life. About the same time, there was another name that they started calling these people, and it was Anabaptists. Anabaptists didn't start in the Reformation or with Zwingli. They started way back here. And the reason they were called Anabaptists is because these Cathars, in order to keep their churches pure, would not accept baptism from the impure churches. If I'm trying to grow a church, I wish I could just accept anybody in as a member that wanted to come. But if I do, I'm going to end up with a corrupt church. So we can't do that. We have to stand firm on it. In conclusion, the Qatars were ridiculed and persecuted because of their purity. That's what the name means. That's where they were given it. In our day, those who practice pure religion are also ridiculed. 
in many places persecuted, and it's coming to America. It's on the way. Let me just warn you, persecution in a real sense is on the way. I can't tell you when, but I can tell you it's coming. And I believe soon. We're going to have to get some backbone and be willing to stand up for the truths of God, even though it costs us jail or our lives. The day is coming. You don't think that, that things just all of a sudden fall apart at the rapture, do you, on this earth? No, it'll start before that. And we're going to see it. To destroy a people, you must first sever their roots. What's happened in America and the world at large is they've tried to sever the roots of the Baptists. They tried to make us something we were not. They tried to make us products of the Reformation instead of the Reformation being products of those who are willing to stand and die for the truth. That, that's a sad thing. We're letting them do it. Our Bible colleges, many of our once great Bible colleges are caught up in this. Some of the colleges that we consider good today are starting down the road and they're starting by letting contemporary music in. So we need to understand that it costs something and we need to stop this. Them severing us from our roots. We must remember our roots and honor our forefathers. Do you know why it is so hard to reach a Catholic for Christ? It's not because they believe the doctrines of the Catholic Church. Most Catholics don't even know what they are. It's because they have been taught from the earliest ages that to change from Catholicism is to dishonor their parents and their roots. We need to have that same thing taught in our churches. Not so much that it dishonors our parents, but that it dishonors God Amen. to change. And is he not our father if we're saved? It's important that we know who we are so we know why we're here, where we've come from, and where we're going. There are some good things about getting old, and there are some bad things about getting old. Some of the good things is all the experience you've had. But I'm going to tell you the thing that hurts me the most. I remember when Baptists stood where they're supposed to. I've watched the evolution. I've watched what's happened in our country. My earliest memories are 1944. I've watched us go from this is what I think to this is what I feel. That's an attitude that changes everything in what we do. Then God blessed me by giving me 12 years ministry in France where I walked in the footsteps of these people that I'm talking about here tonight. I walked up those castles. I went to the center of Qatar studies in Carcassonne, France, where I was a missionary. I've got a stack of French books like this on these people. I've been to the place where in, in 1209, but where he brought the armies of France down and wiped them out. Now, did he kill every one of them? No. And, the, and you can still find to this day traces of them in, in a, in a watered-down form. But the real ones, the ones that stood strong, were wiped out in 1209, just outside of the city of Carcassonne, where I was a missionary for 12 years. Now, having been there, having watched the change, having seen how the change in our beliefs as Baptists has affected our nation and allowed the corruption that's in it, to get to the point that's that it's not alone. It's not that alone. There are a lot of other things. I'm going to tell you something, folks. It's not the politicians that are re responsible for the, for the problems. It's the people Amen. that are responsible for the problems. I've seen that. And it breaks my heart. Because I know that we have within our power as, as Christians to solve the problem. If my people, which are called by my name, and you know the rest of the verse, we have the power. And we won't do it. So it means something to be a Baptist. One of the biggest goals I had when I decided to leave here was to make sure that I left my successor, Brother Carter, but that even before I knew he was going to be my successor, uh, to make sure I left him a Baptist church. Stay a Baptist church. Don't be proud about it. You're not any better than anybody else out there. But stand strong because you see you will lift up the others if you stand strong. Amen. There's an old Chinese proverb. It says, water floats a boat, water sinks a boat. Just depends on whether it's inside or outside. 
Keep the world outside, you'll be lifted up. Let the world in and you'll sink. 